and welcome to episode two of Pot and Poetry. Today I'm going to read three more poems for you and smoke a bit of weed. So I hope you're excited because I'm excited. I did this for the first time last week and um, I was just talking about how this is so like out of my element. Like I never do stuff like this, like talk, like publicly, even though it's not really public because on my page and there's only a certain number of people that will even see it, but still, it's cool, and it's just a way to connect, and everyone's kind of, like, been struggling with connection this past year and finding connection. I don't think I could be the only one that's been, like, longing for connection during this time, because it's just been very lonely i mean of course you have your family but like going out and meeting people and hanging out has not been really like an option at all so it's it sucks but anyways like i said i'm gonna read three poems today one's gonna come from my book that's available for purchase on amazon and for 9.99 if you'd like to check it out and I'm also going to read a poem from this book that I'm obsessed with. It's so good. It's called Teaching My Mother to Give Birth by Warsan Shire. And then I'm also going to read a, um, a little sneak peek at my book that I'm like deep in the trenches of working on right now. And hopefully will be done by the end of the year. But I'm putting like, trying not to put that much pressure on myself because I don't want to just like rush and just put out whatever just 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 because you know I really want it to be like um what's the word intentional like everything has a meaning which or like a place and a meaning and it's very intentional whatever it is that I decide to put in the book so just like shadow puppets everything was very intentional though there's like a lot of mistakes that i made i learned a lot but there's definitely a lot of mistakes in the illustrations some of the illustrations just kill me to look at so yeah the illustrations will definitely be way more improved which is why i need so much time mainly it's not even the writing it's the illustrating and the formatting and the constructing but also the writing. The writing's important, but a lot of it, I write every single day pretty much, so I'm not worried about having enough like content. It's just about being intentional. Okay, yeah, so anyway, we'll start, let's see, we'll start with um, the piece from my book, which is called, um, the one I chose to read today is called Cold, and it is page, I know I bookmarked it, but I have a lot of, oh, here it is. Oh no, uh, wait, not cold, glass. I'm gonna read glass and it's page 25. So glass from Shadow Puppets, here it is. You're looking at me, but you're looking right through me. I'm glass, you're light. I see your eyes, can't catch your vibe. Inches apart, miles at heart. Holding it all down like a volcano ready to erupt. Play that song again, the one that makes us both remember what it feels like to be loved. You know the one, hearts beat, eyes closed, hands around each other's satisfied soul. The one we listen to as we lay entangled in each other. We couldn't be any closer if we tried. The world vanished outside. Only you and I remained alive. We ebbed and weaved in love until the water ran low and emotions ran high. I look for signs of you coming through the fog, ghost-like. At times, I feel I've lost you for good. Can't get a pulse, can't break through. Then I see your likeness reflected off of my transparent form, solid as a stone, the image of the you I've known. And obviously this is like about relationship and how, um, okay, <laughs> I don't like one. My favorite, I, I love the line, inches apart, miles at heart. I know I wrote it. But just like those two little short little lines like tell so much, like we're inches apart, but our heart, like we're miles apart in like our connection and our heart when at one point we were inseparable, like we were pretty much con conjoined. So, and that's just showing like the fading of 
the feelings of being distant and glass and how it reflects to you um, truth in a way. I don't know. But um, so yeah, that's glass from Shadow Puppets. All right, next I'll read, um, I'll go ahead and read the one from More Songshire. She is amazing, I'm telling you. This book is also really small, which is mine's really small. And I always was like, is it too small? I was thinking after I put it out and like, everyone was like, it's, really, it's, a, it's a cute little book, but really it's, it's jam packed with a lot. And I don't think it's necessary to have a giant, um, poetry book and after I got this one I really realized that you can like jam pack a lot into this this such few pages and I guess it's more like a chat book but um that's all you need poems I I don't know it it felt right like the length felt right I didn't want to just have like a thick book with like fillers everything had to be intentional and meaningful that I put in so that was all that was all that it that I needed to put in there I don't know how long this book that I'm working on is going to be. Definitely at least as long as Shadow Puppets, but probably longer, but not by very much. I'm probably, probably it's probably closer to like 80-ish pages. Maybe enough to have a spine. I don't know. Honestly, it's, I'm still so early on into the process that I really don't know how long it's going to be. Okay, so, um, this one that I'm reading. There's so many good ones in here I like really could not choose. I kind of just chose one that I liked. And so this one's called Questions for Miriam and it's page 23 in this book if you decide to pick it up. Um, okay. Were you ever lonely? Did you tell people that songs weren't the same as a warm body and a soft mouth? Did you know how to say no to young men who cried outside your hotel rooms? Did you listen to the songs they wrote, tongues wet with praise for you? What sweaty bars did you begin in? Did you see them holding bottles by the neck, hair on their arms rising as your notes hovered above their heads? Did you know of the girls who sang into their fists, mimicking your brilliance? Did they know that you were only human? My parents played your music at their wedding, called you Makiba, never Miriam, never first name, always singer, never wife, daughter, mother, never lover, aching? Did you tell people that songs weren't the same as a warm body or a soft mouth? Miriam, I've heard people using your songs as prayer, begging God in falsetto. You were a city exiled from skin, your mouth a burning church. Uh, I don't even know. I don't like to interpret other people's work. Um, because I don't know you can't really know what the, exactly they're meaning but if I had to like give it my own interpretation here's this girl who sings and um but and she sings like beautifully that everyone just like loves her but really she's like super broken and lonely and troubled yet she has this beautiful gift and no one really sees that so a song is not the same as a warm body so yeah um yeah that book's super so so good i can't um it will be in my collection for a while i was thinking of like giving this away but i was like no i want to keep it <laughs> um okay so um now it's the final um poem and it's going to be a little sample from my upcoming book and i kind of know the title of it but it's not a, a final it's not a for sure yet and this poem is called um um i don't actually have a title for it yet either which i like all of my poems to have titles just because i like to think of them each as their own little like song or story so giving them a title is just like makes them their own their own living thing you know um and that's also why i haven't been able to like come up with some kind of theme for my page to like all the poems look the same or, or curated the same 
because they're all each their own little thing so anytime I like go to like curate a poem that I wrote into like a format for like Instagram or something I have like a different image for each one and so none of them really are the same because they're all their own different thing and so that's why I'm very inconsistent when choosing how to um choosing the like format for my poems on Instagram um but anyways this poem I don't know what it's called yet but uh I'll just read it <laughs> all right can you be an artist and a lover can you blow kisses and breathe fire can you be a magician, know all of the secrets, and still believe in magic? Are art and love synonymous? Well, are they? Because many of my favorite artists died. Their lives consumed by pain, and art was their escape. Had their life been full of love, maybe then they would not have been artists, but maybe they would have lived. Steadily, I'm trying to prove that love and art are mutually exclusive mutually exclusive so yeah i just find the struggle with balance in being an artist struggle with being an artist because you know art a lot of art comes out of like struggle and pain and and art is kind of the a therapeutic thing people use art as a therapeutic thing and it kind of like keeps it at bay but obviously for some people Sylvia Plath you know some of the greatest artists ever um, Kurt Cobain um, Jimmy H like just like there's endless amounts of artists who their art wasn't enough to save them and so that's what this poem is about like can art be enough to save you and I'm trying to prove that you can have love and have and we have art and it, it doesn't always have to be a life built full of pain to make an artist and so yeah um i i didn't i didn't smoke i don't know i feel i felt it was really hard to like concentrate on reading like i can write really good high but reading really good high for some reason was throwing me off so I know it's called pot and poetry but today it's just called poetry so I hope you enjoyed the reading of these three readings and like I said um if you want to check out either of these books they're both on I got this one from Amazon this is available on Amazon and the other poem um is going to be in my new book so stay tuned thanks for watching peace